Welcome, or good dag alle sammen, and welcome back to the series on the channel uh, where we use academic translations, interpretations, and theories about what uh, the Norse gods and deities actually mean. Uh, when we do this, we see that the myths are not just fairy tales that are meant for kids, uh, but they are things to symbolize different aspects of nature and the cosmos. And today, we are translating Audhumla, the primordial cow, the first being that was there before the universe existed. The cow that had the giant Ymir sucking on its tits for milk, and then the cow licked some ice until a man... Uh, popped out uh, 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 the ancestor of the gods named Buri. Uh, did our ancestors believe in all this nonsense? Well, let's see. As usual, we will look at the etymology and translation of the word first. So for Aldhumla, uh, there are a few different translations that uh, people debate, and I'm going to show them all here. Uh, the first and most common one is uh, hornless cow rich in milk. It comes from Old Norse Auder which means riches, and uh, humala, uh, which uh, hornless is what it means. Um, another translation for this, um, they take it from the word auder, um, which can also mean fate. Um, it can also mean uh, desolate or desert. So some scholars translate Audhumla as a, a hornless desert or, or also a destroyer of the desert like you see here. Um, I've seen one more translation of this and uh, it's, uh, it looks like this. Uh, Audh uh, means unused soil and um, it's kind of a, when you combine Audh and Bla it means empty darkness and then add that with hum, uh, which is twilight and sea. So that could mean something like this here. That's just one more translation I thought I'd include. Um, that's about all the ones that I've seen for Audhum Humla. Uh, I don't know which one is right, uh, possibly all of them at once, actually. But um, anyway, let's look at the mentions of Audh Humla uh, in the myths. So we actually only find Audh Humla in the prose edda, in the section Gilfanding. And uh, it explains uh, in the story that we all know how the giant Ymir was the first being and he got milk from Audhumla and Audhumla got nourishment from licking the salty ice where Audhumla eventually uh, uncovered Buri, uh, who was the ancestor of all the gods. So as you know, uh, the prose edda is not super reliable. It was written by a Christian, Snorri Sturluson, a couple hundred years after pagan times. And he would have not uh, understood the actual myths that his pagan ancestors believed in. Um, if Audhumla was in the Poetic Edda, or any of the Skaldic poems, um, uh, anything like that, I would say okay. But since Audhumla is not mentioned anywhere in the compositions from uh, pagan times, uh, I'm not so convinced that there was even a concept of Audhumla in pagan times. It's possible, but um, it's, it's very possible also that the pagan ancestors did not uh, even know about Audhumla, and it was just something that the Christian author Snorri Sturluson just created um, in the prose era. We do know for sure that Snorri did this. He mixed myth with real history all the time throughout his prose edda. The whole prose edda it does this. It mixes in the gods and myths that represent different aspects of nature. Uh, it mixes them in with actual historical events that happened um, and, 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 and actual real people. Um, so Snorri didn't really know where to draw the line between myths and symbolism and reality. And that is exactly what I think happened here. So I'm going to tell you what I think Audhumla represents. Just keep in mind that this is my theory and, um, and uh, it's no other scholar that has come up with this to my knowledge. But it's, it's a theory that makes the most sense to me and, uh, and to any of the others that I've read. But you guys can let me know. So I think Audhumla represents cattle from the end of the Ice Age when civilization started to expand. So the last Ice Age that we had uh, lasted uh, 100,000 years, or some people debate uh, we're still in an Ice Age that's lasting millions of years, but um, as you can see in this map, uh, the land of our people was completely covered in glaciers for at least 100,000 years, so uh, many of our ancestors would have had uh, died, and others would have been pushed as far south as possible. And for tens of thousands of years, they would have lived in small strips of land along the Mediterranean Sea. 
between the ice on one side and the ocean on the other side. Um, perhaps they lived in Africa too or moved down into uh, the Middle East and uh, the Arabian Peninsula there. We, we think they did that uh, as well. Um, but it was about this time where we have the first evidence of humans um, domesticating cattle. Um, and their main source of nutrition here, of course, there was nothing growing. It was ice everywhere. So their main source of nutrition would have been cattle with their milk or meat. Um, so since prehistoric times, we know that humans bred cattle, especially hornless cattle, a long time ago. Wild cattle, uh, which had horns and were aggressive and were dangerous. Uh, but humans bred hornless cattle and these kind of wimpy little cattle to domesticate them. Um, so, uh, and we even have a rune titled this, uh, two different types of cattle, fehu means um, like basically just cattle or wealth, and then urus is a wild cattle. This was the more dangerous one, this was the giant wild oxen that roamed the land, but um, the cattle that they domesticated was a uh, hornless cattle. And isn't that interesting when you look at that, humala, uh, the, from the cow's name directly translated means hornless from Audhumla. Um, then, as their cattle population grew, uh, they would have not had enough grass to eat, so they would have been licking and digging through the ice, uh, making the ice and glaciers start to recede across the continent, and uh, the lands came back, and people could settle that, like you see on the map here. Of course, this is not the reason that the ice receded at the end of the ice age. Uh, we know today that the ice started to uh, melt when the earth heated up uh, around 10,000 BC, a little bit after that, uh, because the earth's rotation, you know, more sun on the northern hemisphere, CO2 levels rising, making the atmosphere thinner. We all know that. We all know that's what uh, melted the ice. Um, but our ancestors did not know that. The ice age humans did not know that. All they would have seen is that they started domesticating cattle around this time the cattle licked the ice and slowly the ice started to disappear um, giving life and new lands for the people to settle like you see here so i think this is represented by audhumla licking the ice away and giving life to buri which is the ancestor of all the gods uh, so this makes sense looking at another translation of audhumla's name destroyer of desert or a destroyer of the desolate land uh, directly translated uh, the cows licked the ice then the frozen desert disappeared and and life was built there life came back to existence after a hundred thousand years of ice uh, also a note in uh, Snorri's prose Edda, he refers to all domesticated cows later on in the uh, the story as Audhumla or descendants of Audhumla so um, this is exactly what I think Audhumla is um, it's exactly what I think the cow was. I don't think Audhumla was there at the start of the universe with Ymir. I don't think our ancestors believe that. I think Audhumla was there at the end of the last ice age and helped humans to survive and expand after living a hundred thousand years struggling to survive in the ice. Uh, so Audhumla represents the cattle that uh, nourished the Ice Age humans and enabled them to grow and settle in more areas and, and give them a life and growth to humankind. So that's just my theory. When I make these videos with interpretations and theories, I always explain which ones are mine, which ones are other people's, uh, which ones we know for sure, and which ones are debated. But whatever I do, I will always cite my sources and have evidence to back up whatever theory I am presenting. So I'm just so sick and tired of dumb people calling themselves Norse pagan and just completely inventing their own theories about things and uh, not providing any of their sources or evidence to back it up. They're just talking out of their ass and it's not okay. Um, don't listen to these people. Instead, look at what the evidence and sources say so you can develop your own theories. This is why I make these videos, guys. It's to present the evidence that we have so we can all get our minds working together and develop the best theories and discover the lost beliefs of our people. So uh, let me know in the comments if you guys have any theories about the Aldhumla. I would love to hear them. That's about it for this video. Vi ses nästa gång.